Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Coach D, the Wild Man, at you again with another episode of Are You in the Game? This is actually episode number two. And basically, Are You in the Game discuss what it takes to be an uh, up and coming successful MMA fighter in this game. You know, as you already know, the UFC and MMA is, is only 20 years old, so a lot of things are happening that are confusing a lot of up-and-coming fighters are not sure which way to go they don't know how to get themselves in a position to be successful in this sport don't get me wrong you do have those who have been who have been successful and they're doing great things but that's 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 few compared to the number of people that actually do fight so what i do is talk about it from an amateur level and you know what things you should look at and what things you should focus on when trying to be successful so this is epi episode two of that so let's go ahead and get into it um, as you, as my first episode, I talked about a why do you want to be a fighter, what's motivating you, and b how to pick your gym, what type of gym you should pick, what you, what, what should you look for, things that you should focus on. Now, when I posted my podcast, I got a comment in my you know in the comment section, and one of the fighters, female fighters, she said, um, I think her name was Kali. She said, why you should cross train at different gyms, and I agree. Um, if your gym doesn't give you everything you need, you should cross train at different gyms to get some of the aspects that you don't have. So, if your your gym is is big on jujitsu, and that's their bread and butter, then you may have to go somewhere for a for a striking for, um, to be with a striking coach, or something something along those levels, so that you can get more of the ed education that you don't have at your gym. So I definitely agree with that. But let's get into it. So now that you're already at a gym and you're already training as an MMA fighter and you're getting ready to prepare for your first fight, what I want to discuss today is your amateur career. Uh, your amateur career is sometimes overlooked because so many fighters are going, oh, look, I'm going to get you know a 3-2 and two record or a 5-0 and oh record. I'm going to get to that five-win fight and I'm going to go ahead and go pro. And they think that's where they're going to lead to success and money and all that kind of good stuff. And as a pro, you can get paid as a pro, but you have to be a good pro. And you have to be a winning pro for somebody to put you on a show. Just because you are a pro doesn't guarantee somebody's going to put you on their show. So it is my opinion, as what I've seen in, in this game so far up to this point, that you really should focus on your amateur career. You should definitely develop a strong amateur career before you decide to go pro so that you are building yourself. You know, A, you are you are on enough local shows so that enough people can see you and realize that they, they, they do like you. You know, they're following you on social media, they're following your fights, they like what they see. They're invested in watching you be successful. So when you go pro, you have a lot of, you have a bigger chance of you keeping those fan bases as you move to the higher levels. If you're in the amateur ranks and you go through the amateur ranks real fast, you have three, five, six fights, and then you try to go pro, you haven't established yourself as a as a as an MMA fighter. You're just out there fighting MMA. You see what I'm saying? So you want to use your amateur career to establish yourself, to really get a good name for you. And develop a record that people can measure you by. You know, so now you have stats. As an amateur career, you have stats. You have how many victories as an amateur, you know, you won by knockout, you won by submission, you know, you won by decision. You have enough of a stats that people can gauge you on as you move forward. And that's what a lot of scouts are going to look for, what kind of amateur career you have. So if you went pro instantly and you... And and somebody in your coaching staff or your manager or whoever kind of handpicked who you fought. You may have a five and zero record, but you may have not fought anybody. Then you get to the big show and you fight some real some real contenders and you get beat. And then your record goes down. Okay, so don't go pro before you're truly ready to go pro. That's just my opinion as Coach D. You know, what I've seen and what I've, what I've grown to understand in this particular sport. You have to build your name, okay? And if you're paying attention to what is going on in MMA on, my, on the higher levels with UFC, Bellator, and all these bigger shows, you do understand winning is just half the battle. 
putting on great fights is half the battle. Entertainment is just a bigger factor, if not bigger, than your actually fighting ability. So if you're not building enough of a fanfare name and how you fight and what you do, you may come up short in trying to get to the bigger levels. So you definitely want to understand what it takes to be successful in this game by developing your amateur career. So that's my opinion on it. And when you're making the decision, don't listen to everybody on you making a decision. You A, you have to make a decision for yourself. And B, you have to have the knowledge to understand that that's the right decision. Yes, you want to listen to your coaches. Yes, you want to listen to your managers. But make sure they explain why you should go here, why you should fight on this card, why you should fight this person, and why you should go pro. That way you're clear on your road to success. Just taking fights to take it, that's great. But if you're taking, you know, lackluster opponents and you're taking um, fighters with, 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 with poor records and it don't match up to your record, that may not boost your career. So paying attention to, to who you're listening to, what fights you're going to do, where you're going to do it, how you're going to do it is just as important as the fight itself. Okay? So like I said before, establish your, establish your amateur record. You should definitely stick in the game until you know you're well-rounded as an amateur before you go pro. You know, try to get 10, 12, even 15, even high as 20 fights as an amateur before you look to go pro. Now, I know from a money standpoint, that's a big investment. But if you're trying to be a pro with this sport and be great at this sport, that's the investment you need to get you to that, to that other level. And by picking the right platforms that get it done, that allows you to be successful amateur amateur. Giving you an example, one of the big platforms to look at as far as an amateur is UMAF, which is the United States uh, Mixed Martial Arts Federation. They're an amateur promotion. Not promotion. They're an amateur um, foundation that helps you develop yourself as an amateur. You're fighting on the, on the amateur stage. Then you fight at a national level, and then you fight at an international level. So that is a track record that you can actually follow as an amateur. Instead of picking random promotions that you're not sure how it's going to go, you have a track record that you can actually measure. So what's going to happen first, if you do get a part of UMAF as an amateur fighter, what are you going to do first? You're going to, you're going to qualify at one of these amateur shows, you know what I'm saying, one of your local amateur shows. They're going to let you know that it is a UMAF qualifier, Okay. So that's step one. You go to that match and you win your match at a, at a, at a UMAF qualifier. Now what? You're automatically established as a winner in a qualifier. Okay? That's brandable. You can brand that. You can say, hey, I just qualified in UMAF. You see what I'm saying? Then you compete at the national levels where all the best fighters all around will compete to see who is the best at the national level. So say you go to that and you actually win the national level. Now you are a national amateur champion. You know, that's something that could be branded, something that you can be marketed on. People can track that. You see what I'm saying? People can go, hey, look, he's a national champion. He's the best in the world right now on, on the, on the um, national scene. So then you compete at the international level where you're going to compete against amateur fighters from other countries. Okay? And say you win that. Then you become an international champion at your amateur level. Once again, a, tra a trackable system that you can bank on, that you can build on. It's not random. It's control that people can measure you by. And with UMAP, I'm talking about two of the greats who have ever done it. is Shorty Torres and Will Starks. Both of them have won the national championships twice in UMAP and won the international championships twice and on, the, um, on the world level. So those two, there are two particular fighters who had long amateur careers, I mean, over 20-something fights, both of them, okay, they took that, they won UMAF, they won IMAF, and then they branded that into a mixed martial arts career, they're tight, they're fighting on Titan FC, and they're getting paid as pros, and they're in, some of them are champions, I think Dan Shorty Torres is the current champion right now, you see what I'm saying, so that shows you that you can develop an amateur career that can be marketable into a pro career. You don't have to be random and desperate to go pro. You can take your time, build you an amateur base that you can measure to the world before you go pro. So that's my that's my take today on 
are you in the game is understanding how to have a more effective amateur career. Don't rush to go pro. Take your time. Learn why you're going to do it. And when you go pro, it'll benefit you more than having a quick amateur career. Okay? That's my take on it. This is Coach D. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. I'm helping everybody do this MMA game because I love it so much. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up. This is Coach D. Do you hear from me again? Peace out.